IBM Rational Doors Linking and Traceability. This demo focuses on standard doors links and external links. Links are created, deleted, and transverse. Dynamic traceability views are created for the purpose of impact, gap analysis, and scope creep. And finally, suspect links are identified and created. This demo does not cover collaboration links. One of the prevailing aspects of rational doors is the ability to link objects with other requirements or resources and the many ways to transverse and visualize these links. With links, you can quickly answer questions like, which system requirements do not have test cases associated with them? What stakeholder requirements have been satisfied? What is the impact to my project if I change a specific requirement? And many other questions. IBM Rational Doors offers powerful lifecycle traceability to help teams align their efforts and their business needs and measure the impact that change will have on everything from business goals to development. There are three types of links you can create. Standard or internal door links are links within the same rational doors database using a specific relationship. These links allow for traceability throughout the project lifecycle. External links are links to an entity or resource that is outside the current rational doors database. For example, a link to a website or a different doors database or a document. Collaboration links are links from a rational doors object to an artifact in a server that has been set up using rational solution for collaborative lifecycle management. For example, linking rational doors object to an artifact in IBM Rational Change Management or Quality Management application. Before starting to link objects, it is important to consider a linking schema which restricts the type of links that can be created between objects, as well as the direction of the links. A little diligence in creating a schema will facilitate understanding how and why objects are linked, as well as getting information you need by dynamically transversing through the links. Setting up a link schema is an administrative task and beyond the scope of this presentation, but let's spend a little time understanding what the schema does. In a typical information model, we have a variety of artifacts such as stakeholder requirements, system requirements, architecture references, and testing at all levels. The information in these modules is related. This is where linking comes in. How are the artifacts related? In this schema, the system requirements are related to the stakeholder requirements via a satisfies relationship, and the architecture is related to the system requirements via a satisfies relationship. Notice how there is no immediate relationship from the architecture to the stakeholder requirements. So according to the schema, we cannot link architecture requirements to the stakeholder requirements. But this is an implied relationship going through the system requirements. Also notice the direction of the link relationship. Even though the links are transversible in both directions, there is a source of a link and a destination via a particular relationship. If set up correctly, rational doors will prevent you from linking objects that do not adhere to the link schema. Creating a schema is considered a best practice. Even if a schema is not set up, rational doors will allow you to make links between artifacts and store them in a default link module. But if you don't have a schema that is enforced, there is a possibility that before long, items will be linked in a variety of ways and impact and gap analysis will be hard to manage effectively. Let's consider our example, an automated water meter. Starting from the stakeholder requirements, we see that some requirements have been approved, others rejected, postponed, and others are in progress. We notice a reference for MMIU as something we need to adhere to. Let's create an external link to a file that can be used as a reference. In my case, this file is local, but this file could be in a configuration managed folder or a web page or a different location. We choose to open the URL when the link is traversed. We decide that this will be an outgoing link. The outgoing link that we just created is red and pointing to the right. All outgoing links will look like this. Incoming links are orange and point to the left. To transverse through a link, right click on the arrow and follow the linked item. For us, this is a placeholder, but you can imagine this can be very useful. Our next step will be to identify the gaps in our implementation by inspecting which stakeholder requirements have been associated with system requirements. 
Rather than inspecting all links, we will create a view that will list all linked system requirements. For this, we will use the analysis wizard. According to our link schema, we know that we are looking for incoming links from the system requirements to the stakeholder requirements. We also know that these are standard doors links. Let's be specific in the module selection. We are interested in system requirements. Our enforce schema specifies only one type of relationship between the stakeholders and the system requirements, so we don't have to pick a specific link module. We can select which properties of the linked objects we want to see, and even which link properties. We have several options here as far as the column width, whether or not we want to show one attribute per line and the names, if there are any embedded objects, and also recursive analysis. Do you want to follow the link above system requirements to the next level? You could use multi-column analysis and specify the depth of this analysis. We won't do recursive analysis and we'll press finish. Let's reorganize our columns and see the column that was created. Notice the stakeholder requirement is linked via a satisfies link to this object ID. Notice that there are some requirements that are not linked. Here we have identified a gap. This view is dynamic, which means that if something like an object text changes on the other side, we will see the change reflected here. It also means that if new links are created or deleted, these changes will be reflected here as well. This view can be saved. And we can switch to it anytime we want to see the latest information. Here is an example of a multi-column trace view which takes us from the stakeholder requirements to the system requirements to the software requirements. We will now link between the stakeholder and system requirements object. There are many ways to create links, but we will use the drag and drop. We have created special link views that make linking easier by placing modules next to each other. We have identified a stakeholder requirement that links to a system requirement and we drag and drop using system requirement as a start of our link and stakeholder requirements as a target. This is according to a schema. Notice the link indicator. We have identified two more items that need to be linked. By mistake, we try to link from the stakeholder requirements to the system requirements, but our administrator enforced the schema and we get this error. So we link the right way. Thinking this over, we decide that this is not a very good link for a number of reasons. So we decide to delete it. Deleting is easily accomplished from the Objects Properties Links tab. Select the link, follow it to make sure you have the correct one or look at the details, and assuming you have the correct access rights, press Delete. Using the Analysis Wizard in the System Requirements module, we created a view that helps us identify scope creep by showing all of the system requirements and the stakeholder requirements that they are linked with, if any. Scope creep is suspected when a system requirement does not support a stakeholder requirement. Finally, we want to check for suspect links between the stakeholder and system requirements, which indicate that something changed in the objects since the link was created. There are options to display an explanation of what caused the links to be suspect or simply the link indicator. We will display some of these options. We are specifically selecting to display only suspects that are outgoing to the open modules since we are only concerned for suspect links with the stakeholder requirements. Using the convenient filters that exist for suspect links, the view displays just the linked items with suspicions. Let's use another wizard to explore what caused the suspect link and clear it accordingly. Select the outgoing link. The details will highlight what caused a suspicion. What triggers a suspect link can be configured so not all changes will flag a link as suspect. You have the option to clear the link. Notice how the suspicion has cleared. This concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching.